Okay. So here we are. The title of the talk is The Sound of Her Name Tastes Like a Green Banana. And you're saying, how is that possible? And the answer is, the lady in the front row knows something about... Can you hear me or... Is this better? Oh, it needs to be recorded. Okay. So um, the topic is synesthesia. This is what a synesthete somebody with synesthesia might see this word. The S's are going to be red. The I sounding vowels are going to be blue. Okay, It's one kind of synesthesia. What is synesthesia? Well, we'll do a little breakdown. Can everybody in the back see this? Syn, as you might remember from your linguistics classes or just mom and dad, um, it means to join together, right? Okay, and Nesthesia or esthesia is feeling or sensation. So synesthesia is basically a joining of senses. Okay? It's a mixing of senses. So some people might taste a color. Others might feel a sound. Let me give you some concrete examples. Okay? So you've got Beethoven. Everybody knows Beethoven, right? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> so he had what's called musical notes color synesthesia. So granted, he composed with the notes, but if he closed his eyes, for example, here, D major was orange, okay? B flat was another color, all right? Can you imagine closing your eyes and seeing this? Now, what's really amazing is Stevie Wonder has synesthesia too, okay? You know, he's blind, right? Billy Joel has synesthesia. Tori Amos has synesthesia. Vincent Van Gogh had it, okay? Now, what about Marilyn? Woo, mama! Okay? I had to keep her because I didn't know what time this was going to be. At 8 in the morning, I thought, well, I've got to put Marilyn up on the screen. Okay? So she had something called sound touch synesthesia with music and covering. And an example of this, um, I think the college university president is old enough to maybe, I don't know, you were probably a tiny boy when this happened. <laughs> uh, Marilyn, I, I don't know, what, what year were you born? Can I ask that? Uh, what year? Can I give you my name if you give it back? Okay. <laughs> All right. So at any rate, in the late 50s, she posed for a kind of risque calendar, okay? And later, she was interviewed. And one of the interview questions was, did you have any clothes on? Did you have anything on? And her answer was, yes, the radio. Okay. Well, now, you know, they laughed and said, excuse the pun, or not the pun, but, you know, the, the stereotypical thing, you know, dumb blonde. No, that wasn't it, because if you've read anything that Marilyn Monroe has written, she was highly intelligent. That's why they got rid of her, right? Okay. So, uh, what she was getting at was, with music and sound in the room, it was like a covering for her. She was not naked at all because of the sound quality covering her skin, okay? That's what I meant by sound covering synesthesia. Now, this man, very interesting, an old British guy, Mr. James Warnerton, okay, he's got sound taste synesthesia. Now, what you're asking is sound taste synesthesia. If I say village, in his mouth, he tastes sausage. If I say safety, he tastes lightly buttered toast. So imagine this guy when he was 16 going through his driver's ed training. You know, he heard safety like 20 times, so he's probably having breakfast. His, you know, he probably gained 50 pounds, right? So, but it, it, these are just two examples, but a lot of different words, he has different tastes in his mouth, okay? Um, so, what are the qualities of synesthesia? Um, characteristics, it's stable. So, when Mr. Warnerton was a small boy, when Marilyn was a small girl, no longer Marilyn, or at that point, not Marilyn Monroe, but Norma Jean Baker, right? Um, she had those synesthetic qualities. Involuntary. Myself, um, if you saw the little teaser on YouTube, I made mention that when it's really, really cold outside, I can't help it. My whole world is red. Now, my wife thinks it's wonderful because I, you know, I, see, I do see the world through rosy-colored glasses. I come from a small town in Wisconsin. I'm an innocent boy. 
still to this day at 48, okay? Um, but in the winter, every, literally everything is very, very red, okay? Nothing I can do about it. I close my eyes. I went to people 10 years ago and I asked them, what is my problem? They said, oh, it's the tint on your glasses. I said, no. <laughs> Uh, when my glasses are not on, I still see red, okay? So mine is a quality where I, I take the environment in kind of through my ears. When my ears are really cold, it's red. When it's a little less cold, um, then it's more of an orange. But there's nothing I can do about it. It's involuntary, okay? Hereditary, it's, it's hereditary. Um, it's funny. Finally, about a year ago, I asked my mom on the phone. I said, do you ever see red in the winter? And she said, yeah, doesn't everybody? I said, oh, man. Ma's got it too, okay? And Mar they, they've done studies. Marilyn Monroe's mom had some form of it. Um, so what, it, it's good, we're clear, what, what this amazing thing is. Some of you are looking at me like, yeah, I got it, big daddy. <laughs> um, I mean, got it as, as, as having synesthesia. So how many people have it? Uh, depends. You, you ask Mrs. Simna from England, who did a study in 2005, and she said that there are about one out of 20, okay? But then there's this beautiful couple up in Canada, our neighbor. And uh, Mrs. Maurer and her husband said, is it possible that everybody has it, at least from childhood? How do we do this now? Speaking, one, two, three, okay. I I'm gonna use my hands here, all right? So the whole thing is, our, our previous speaker talked about we have this beautiful three pound flesh in between our ears, right? Well, when you're a child, okay, when you're a child, the number of neurons is probably three times of what we have as adults, and this pruning goes on, right? So with all those neurons, they're thinking that the child hears the mother's voice, but sees the mother's voice, tastes the mother's voice. So the average baby could be, everybody could be a synesthete. okay? And then gradually as we get older, the brain prunes and we lose these connections. And so there's it's not definitive right now, but they're thinking that perhaps a synesthete just has more neural connections than the average person. But let's do a little study. I want you to raise your hand now. Okay. Let's say that I have a, a made-up language in which one word is babao and one word is kiki. Okay. Um, which one would you say of these two is kiki and which one is babao? The one on the... Uh, left here is which one? Kiki. How, ma how many of you say Kiki? Raise your hand. Okay. A lot of people. Okay. How many say Babao for this one? Really? Interesting. You've totally brought. Now, are you. Really? Okay. <laughs> this, this audience is totally different than every place else. On earth, actually. Um, so most people say that this goes Kiki with the hard consonant K is like a spike. Okay? Others say that babao with a soft bilabial ba, pa, is soft like a cloud. Okay, so they go with that. Now, if you don't, that, that's fine. I'm not demeaning you in any sort of way. I'm just saying that you're different, which is good, because that's what this whole thing is about, right? <laughs> um, so, but the whole idea is that people feel the shapes. So even if you felt one way or the other, maybe, Everybody in here is a synesthete, okay? I'm not saying it, I'm just throwing the possibility out there. Okay, so let's take a look at another little interesting study that was done. Um, oh, kitty cat. Oh, no one's allergic to cats, are they? Okay, uh-oh. Okay, these are just pictures. Okay. Um, so the little kitty there and the big kitty. Okay, Ramatanjan and Hubbard did this little study and they started looking at language. And does language have any significance to synesthetes or synesthesia? And it's, it is interesting, because look at this. In French, right, small is petit, right, petit, or grand, right? Spanish, pequeño, grande, Japanese, chisai, oki, okay? And Martins, klein, gross, right? <laughs> okay. So there, there is this idea, at least in certain adjectives, that maybe you know, we shape the mouth, we shape the structure of the language based on how we feel about the word. So that nonsense that they taught me at UW-Madison about language being completely arbitrary, just study Chomsky's uh, universal grammar, you know, might be tossed out the window in a few years, okay, the more they study synesthesia. Because personally, I believe that language is a beautiful thing, and there's a lot of hidden meaning there. Okay, da-da-da, okay. 
So, synesthetes have what, do you think? How are we doing with the time? Two minutes, okay, good. What do you think they have? Like an elephant, whoa! Amazing recall, okay? For example, let's take Mr. Solomon Cherishevsky. They gave him 70 words, and he gave them perfectly from start to finish. Then he went backwards from back to front. Then the most amazing thing, they tested him 15 years later. Without fail, same words, front and back. Okay? Now, not everybody is like Solomon here. Um, he had number, a number of kinds of synesthesia. Okay? But the average synesthete has pretty good recall, and it makes sense, right? Because basically what you're doing is making all sorts of connections with the senses, right? Am I right or am I right or am I wrong? Oh, well, a little. Okay. <laughs> all right. So let's take a look at your applications for school and life. Life in school, okay? Um, chocolate, everybody loves chocolate, right? Anybody here allergic to chocolate? If you are, don't worry. It's just a picture, okay? All right, so there was a company, which I won't say, because I won't get in trouble, but they were having difficulties with sale. They had the pictures up there. That was fine in the mall, but then they pumped in chocolate smell, and their sales went up 60%, okay? What about in school, okay? John Medina, when he teaches enzymes, okay? at the University of Seattle in Washington. In one room, he sprays brute aftershave, gives the lecture on enzymes for that whole unit. Another class, he doesn't spray the brute aftershave. In the end, he sprays a little in both classrooms and gives the test. Now, which group do you think scores higher every semester? You guys are so quiet. Okay. <laughs> which group? With the brute, right, okay. And it, it, it makes sense, right? Because if you're studying something, in an environment, and then you're adding more sensory qualities to that, you're probably going to do better, right? So whether you have synesthesia, um, in, in my classrooms as an ESL instructor, what I like to do is when I'm teaching a vocabulary word like meticulous, I'll ask my students what color it is, okay? Now some students have synesthesia, and they're able to give me the color. Others will just make a, a connection with it. Or if, I have if somebody has personality synesthesia, or they can take personalities and match it to the word, like the old British bachelor. It's kind of our theme today, isn't it, the British? They did a lot with synesthesia, okay? Um, so, the diversity of possibilities. If you've got it, your life is basically made. You can really tap into it. But my idea is if you don't have synesthesia, you can still use your, your, the multi-sensories that you have. And, you know, we talk about five senses, but if you read American Scientific Journal and go into the senses, we have about 33. Okay, so there's a lot that you can tap into. So everybody in this classroom should graduate with Ferris State with an A plus GPA from now on. And if you don't, send me an email saying, hey man, that lecture you gave was a bunch of wonderful things. <laughs> All right, so for you, um, maybe the sound of her name doesn't taste like a green banana. Maybe it actually, Veronica sounds beautiful to you. But however you take it, the ball is in your court. Now graduate from Ferris State with a 3.99 GPA using synesthesia techniques. Good? Okay.